Hi everyone, we're here again for another video with another inspiring entrepreneur no, with the heart and the goal for you guys to be part of this growing economy that I hope their stories will be something that will inspire you and give you the wisdom to be able to make the right decisions in your investment. So this will all be in Icon 2018. So for this video, we have someone very, very exciting to interview. Uh, why? <laughs> He didn't even graduate college, but now he's the CEO, he's the president of his own company. So let's talk more about his journey. Guys, I'd like you to meet Mr. Jairus Ferrer. So, hello. Jairus, you basically, compared to everyone else that I interviewed, you, know, you look relatively young, yes? How, how relatively old? young, yes. How, how old are you already? 28, sir. 28, 28 years old. All right, so let me start with this. Why did you not go to college? Well, circumstances push me. Um, the basic story there was I was talking to my dad uh, at, the, uh, at the intersection of life, you know? Okay. The intersection of intersection life is like, how, how intersection old are you? of life, how meaning old are you when, when, high school to college, right? Okay. High school to college, like usually. That came very early. <laughs> you know, intersection of life only okay. because okay. it's a decision that you'll make and then uh, it's gonna change the course of your life, especially mm -hmm. a college degree, right? Okay. Um, and and one of the one of the interesting conversations I had with my father, sabi ko, pa, I don't know what to take. I don't know what course to take. Mm -hmm. My parents, like, sabi nila, well, as long as you choose one course, okay, okay, well, as long as you choose one course, you stick to it. You're not gonna shift anymore. Uh -huh. Only because you're not gonna waste our money. <laughs> <laughs> yun lang yun. Okay, so sabi ko, patay. You know, if I'm gonna do this, if I'm gonna do this, I have to make sure that it's something I really want. But did, did you have something in mind already? Because uh, high school, parang you you would take entrance exams third year, fourth year palang before you know, before jumping into college. You know, when you're high you school, you don't really think of these things. Like, at that okay. time, I was fully into music. I was uh, I was dedicated to playing the drums. Mm. Uh, I was dedicated to swimming. Okay. Um, I was uh, representing, uh, not representing, but I would I would compete. I would mm. compete and just do it for fun because I liked it. So. Something in the far future is not really yet in your mind. So that deciding factor of going to college was something that I really took into heart. But in lang, Marv, I, uh, I found the concept called gap year. Oh, okay, okay. I found the concept called <laughs> gap year. It's good that you got it early. Huh? I have some friends who are my age now. They're, now is their gap year. <laughs> okay. I, I found the concept called gap year and I was reading through it and sabi ko, ginagawa pala siya sa ibang bansa. Mm. So I convinced my parents, sabi ko, mapa, I found this concept called gap year. Ito lang yung deal nila sa akin. Their deal was, as long as you make that gap year productive. Okay. So make it productive and hindi siya, it's not gonna waste your time. That's, yeah. So what, that's when you started to go to Similia? That's when we found out about the Similia program in Bukit okay. Non. So, um, my dad, my, my parents were part of a group and they said they were gonna go to this business training program. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jay, you wanna come? Eh ako, since kalad ka rin ako, I'm like, since I was young, I, wherever, let's go, let's go there, I haven't okay. been there, right? Okay. So we were living in Cagayan de Oro. And that was when it started. I, I started to, I found out about the program. We were going to the week-long business programs and I got so interested until the founder, um, Tito Dodong, said, Jay, why don't you take our long course? But was it was it hard, especially the stigma? No, parang there's it. Parang they, they look at you different if you didn't go to college. Uh, did you ever experience that? Well, of course. I mean, there was always that. Parang oh, sa kanang college, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm like, sa kanang ako ng college, uh, bukid don. Okay. okay. <laughs> and, and you know, the interesting part there, Mar, was that 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 gap year was the was what pivoted me to what I'm doing today. Mm. So the Similia program was was a life-changing program for me only because it taught me values and character towards work applied uh, through the farm. So uh, you from high school you did the Similia program for five years, but it's like uh, OGT already that you got. Oh, definitely. Yeah, well, the, like the original plan was I I would stay there for only four months. Okay. And. After the four-month program, uh, the institution said, "Hey, why don't you why don't you work here already?" Okay. So, so yeah. But while you were doing that, parang uh, it never came to your mind already to go to college. It wasn't parang your intention already. I was having fun. Eh. Okay. I was having fun. Uh, we were we were in the field working, and I was already earning a little bit. But uh, at that time, your parents were okay. With they it? were okay with it because uh, um, I was still being productive. Mm. 
Uh, and then of course, on the second year of working in 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 the in, in Similia, that's when I went through a homeschool college program. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, so but you still study the. I, I I did. I I started something for two years, but sabi ko. All the information plus in the internet. Mm. So why am I paying someone to get the information again in the internet? So what what the program taught me is niche and specified learning. If I'm interested in something, I become a nerd at it, Marv. That's what I do also. Yeah, I recommend that. No? <laughs> here's the thing though, for those who went through college, you'll, uh, you'll understand what I'm saying. There are certain things that we learn we don't use in real life anymore and it's very academic as well. So. Although, to, to put a balance on it, naman, Marv, uh, I, I respect uh, the, the institutions of college only because it also brings you the the uh, certain connections as well, mm. business connections, which I'm also trying to build up over time. Okay. Right? Because when you come from a certain school, iba na yung iba na yung uh, upfront na the thing. Eh. Mm. But okay. also, I was okay to do without that, only okay. because I was just having so much fun, mm -hmm. and learning was actually a balance of life at the time. Pero sak sakto, eh. a lot of the for me, a lot of the people that I follow na great tech entrepreneurs didn't even fin finish college as well. So I think you're in the Right, path, I guess. <laughs> uh, I hope so. I hope so, and and I hope the solution we're coming up with will help a lot of so people. So now, when you when you were going through that, no, you didn't go through college. You already knew, naman, that you would be an entrepreneur, or it wasn't. No, also no. planned that. No, way. it was only because I would. I, we would take like one of the principles that was always taught to us was use what you have, right, and make the most of what you have. So at that time, what I had was like, okay, there was vegetables in the field. Uh, we would, I would trade it to the local market, and I would, that was my assignment at that time. And um, um, uh, the founder would have his farm's produce in excess. I would Tito, can I sell it? So I started to look for customers uh, in the city. In the city, so that yeah. was that, that was your parang earnings. That, that was your own or extra earnings and all of that. Okay. But it wasn't much. But it was more than enough from where I was. Only because I was already content from where I was. Okay. Now you you mentioned when you when you went from Bukidnon after uh, going to that program, you went to Manila and then you went to modeling. <laughs> So opposite, 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 yeah. So um. Oh, So that's why I I like stock trading because no one sees you. Hindi mo kalam maging guapo. So bagay na bagay sa akin. Nakatawa kasi um, it was a totally polarized industry. Okay. Like from coming from an agri perspective, and you're alone in the field, you're working uh, all day under the sun, and then you're trading, and it's not a glamorous thing, right? And then two weeks after resigning from uh, from the program in Bukidnon, um, I said, "Hey, I, I'm, I'll I'll visit a friend." And in Cagendi Oro, I got a call from uh, from a local designer who's a friend of my, of my sister. Say, "Jai, kailangan namin ng extra guy kasi nagback out yung isang person from Manila." I didn't know what it was. Long story short, it was a show from from a group of Manila to launch a brand in Cagendi Oro. So okay. salim po sa lang ako okay. at that time, and that was what catapulted it to to me but moving. Are, are you still doing it now? Or no more, no more. So um, yeah, I'm focused full time on, on on the work okay. that, that that we're doing. So now, from from the time you went from high school, skipped college, went to modeling, uh, what pushed you to start your business and your endeavor right now? I use the modeling industry as a way to improve myself what do i mean because you know people think because it's just glitz and glamour but in reality it's also a lot of hard work when i say hard work it's also because you're trying to be you have to have high eq to be able to like move around the industry right and that's what i wanted to develop here in metro manila especially a guy like me from bukid non moving to metro manila i wanted to um and there's nothing wrong about that right yeah but 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 you know, you have to learn also to adjust to society as well, right? So yeah. So uh, when you started, parang what what gave you the the idea of you said you you said that your background from farming led you to do what you're doing right now. Yes. So. Pero you did you already see that you had the skills to uh, parang make this business happen? If there's one thing about what I love to do, Marv, is when I find something. I really study it and I really, if it helps a lot of people, I actually promote it myself and really be an ad advocate for such things. 
And after my uh, two and a half year full-time uh, modeling short career, or whatever you want to call it, I wanted to go back into the food industry only because I noticed yung kulang sa city, excess naman sa provinces. Mm, interesting. Yeah, so sabi ko, hey, maybe, maybe we could do something. So I started to look for products and true enough, I went back to our roots in Mukidnon. Okay. And we, we found a certain product which we started to distribute in Metro Manila, which catapulted my friend and I to start a distribution business where kami rin yung gumagawa ng manual labor. Kami nag-drive for a year, we were driving our truck kami mismo. Kami mismo nag-deliver, kami mismo nag-sisay. Sa kakatawa nga before, I'll tell you a story. Um, may meeting at 2 o'clock, pero may delivery sa umaga. Okay. Walang, so walang. you had to check yung damit nyo? Oo, oh, so sa so umaga, mag-deliver, okay. dala-dala yung truck. So I had to find a way, sa, especially sa Metro Manila, hirap pag-park dito, di ba? Okay. Imagine driving a, a refrigerated truck, and then you have the extra clothes there. So you have to look for a, a comfort room to change okay. and then para kang walang nangyari sa meeting, di ba? But that's entrepreneurship talaga. Exactly. At the start, you have yeah. to uh, know, every, know everything. So here's the thing. Uh, to wrap this up, if for people who are young also uh, that want to start their own business, what were, what were what's something that you can impart to them that, hey, actually, I shouldn't be scared to actually start a business. Because yeah, yeah. you have uh, context, no? majority of Filipinos, they're mostly employed. Uh, the, the culture is you study hard, get a good job, and then climb the ladder. Yes. You did something that's totally, I guess, opposite. Because you, you didn't go to college, <laughs> uh, you didn't get a job, and then you didn't climb any ladder, but you made your own. So, what's something that, I guess, inspired you and pushed you to go that route? And what's something that can impart to them as well? Maybe I would take things on a daily basis, like whatever the challenges are. But to act, if you're employed, no problem. Save as much as you can. But while you're, if, if ever you're still at a, on a single state, right? You're, you're still single and you're still uh, trying to figure out life. Make your, uh, be very content of the simple things. Like, if you can save as much, go ahead. Because, and then I would spend a lot of time reading Marv. Like, instead of watching TV, I would always go to books. Do, do you spend a lot? No. Not so much? What's your... Do you do you, you, do you budget every every month? or? I so? do have a budget because I'm living independently. Okay, in so city. as you budget your own, what's your biggest expense per month? Travel. Ah, tra when I say tra travel when I say tra or vacation? Or? No, 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 no. Travel on lo uh, moving around. Okay, oh, so business, better business related. Business related. So, but for your own personal expense, how? Um, I would save up for to to travel. Like, uh, we would wait for mga sale tickets, you know, oh. things like that. But I would save up for it. Definitely. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, for for people who plan to to start people who plan to start businesses, what can you tell them? Uh, Especially people who are a bit scared as well. So, yeah, uh, you know, business is scary. I won't, I won't, I won't deny that. But it's exciting because you have to be, you have to love solving problems. And when you're solving problems, it's like, okay, how, this is a challenge. What am I gonna do next? And this is the challenge. How do I get there? You know, so it's always about uh, figuring things out. Who can I call to actually help me? And the nice thing about business is it's very, very humbling. Very, very humbling only because you have to ask help from other people. Like, hey, help me, I don't know how to do this. Can you teach me? Oh, what book can I read? Can you what? You know, can you recommend something? So, and the nice thing about our generation today, Marv, is our generation. Yeah. <laughs> our, our generation I'm, is... I'm, I'm 44. Yeah. Joke lang. <laughs> I'm 44. That's Randall's age. <laughs> Actually, Randall's 51. <laughs> Randall. Happy birthday. <laughs> so, um... So it's really getting to that field of like solving problems and serving people, serving pro solving problems for them. And over time, you get to see, oh, pwede pala ako gumawa ng ganitong business. So it starts from again where you are, but at the same time, you evolve into it. Right, so this is part one of our video with Jairus Ferrerno. Uh, we didn't really talk about what the business is specifically, but it's pretty much involved into farming and tech and that will be the next two videos so if you want to hear more about him also this is also for icon 2018 no? we'll have the link below so you can catch him live no uh if you rank all of the attendees or the speakers in icon 
Siya yung pinakagwapo. Well, no match kami lahat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the only model in, in the roster. <laughs> so, the link will be below. So, you can also join and hear his story out. So, that's it. Uh, watch out for part 2 where we talk about the farming industry and how we actually built a business around it as well. So, that's it for now. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. See you in part 2. <laughs>